Good morning and welcome to worship here at Frederick Presbyterian Church. We welcome you to this day, the Sunday after Ascension, uh, and invite everyone to join us for fellowship immediately following morning worship downstairs in the fellowship hall. If it is your first time with us, we especially welcome you and ask that everyone find the black pad that is on your pew, sign your name, and if you're visiting with us, uh, hopefully you'll give us your contact information so that we may, uh, may uh, establish contact with you. Also, there is a QR code that takes you to a direct response form in the bulletin, and as well as a yellow card in the back of your pew rags. There are a couple of announcements that need to be made. It looks like David's got one. Good morning. I'm David Cassetna, uh, representing the Compassion, Peace, and Justice Committee here at FPC. And on June 24th is Pride Week in Frederick, and there's a Pride Day along the creek. Uh, last year was our first year having a table at Pride Week, and uh, it was very well received. We met a lot of people and told about the mission of the church. Uh, and this year we're doing it again. And we have two requests. One is we're looking for more volunteers. And second, we're looking for candy. Uh, so for volunteer, <laughs> for volunteer opportunities, uh, there's a, a Nikki Early's address is in the bulletin, so you can uh, write to her and she will coordinate and find a time for you. And for candy, there is something, a box in Heritage Hall where you can drop off donations, things like Smarties, lollipops, other heat resistant candies because it's kind of like sunny out there and hot so it's a basket it's a basket, it's okay, a basket. thank you uh, okay. all right thanks david a couple other uh notes to lift up and these are all in the bulletin and that is next sunday is may 28th which is the festival of pentecost we gather here in the sanctuary and invite everyone to wear red or orange or yellow or colors of fire for that special day. Two weeks from today is June 4th, and we will not be here in the sanctuary, but we'll be at Staley Park at 1030. Uh, all, please come, bring a lawn chair um, for that if, um, outdoor service on June 4th. And then on June 7th, which is a Wednesday, uh, Lisa and I, along with Rebecca Lehman, who's chair of uh, membership, and Terry Oakley, who's the clerk of session, invite anybody who's new to the church to come join us for a uh, cookout at the manse, our house, which is directly next door. So we'll be here in the breezeway uh, for that Wednesday evening cookout uh, for newcomers. Joe Johnson, our Director of Family Ministries, is uh, welcoming and recognizing folks today. <clears throat> Good morning, church. Good morning. I am Joe, the Director of Family Education here, and I am so excited uh, on behalf of the Christian Education Committee to take this time to recognize and to thank our Sunday school teachers, our adult teachers, and all those who have helped assist in our Christian education this season. Let's give them a big round of applause as we recognize them. First and foremost, we want to recognize Lindsay Dingman for the work that she does with our pre-K. Lindsay, if you would stand up and please come up, and we have a, a gift for you. She's been teaching our pre-K class throughout the year, also assisting in teaching in Vacation Bible School, and we're just extremely thankful for the work that you do. Next for our younger elementary class, teachers Lisa Ziga and Hannah Lehman, if you would come up. <laughs> Again, assisting teaching our younger elementary class, faithful every single day. <laughs> Next, we wanna recognize our older elementary class teachers, John Elliott and Kylie Bashore. John Elliott and Kylie. Kylie, are you here? <laughs> <laughs> they both have been pillars in ensuring that our older elementary class have teachers and are engaged every Sunday. Thank you for the work that you do. Also for our middle school teachers, we have Claudia Neely and Katherine Thompson. If you will come up as well, <laughs> Claudia and Katherine. <laughs> They are faithful in teaching our middle school, even when there's no students. <laughs> and we're glad for the work that they do, their creativity and engagement. We appreciate all that they do. 
For our high school teachers, we have Charlie Eflin and Kathy House. Charlie and Kathy. <laughs> Very appreciative of Charlie's creativity and Kathy's faithfulness in everything that she does. We also want to recognize some of our adult teachers. Greg Sims. Greg, are you here? Greg, come on up. You're the next contestant on uh, The Bag is Yours. <laughs> Greg, Greg taught an adult class through the Book of Acts, and he also teaches a Wednesday book study, and he's faithful in all that he does. We're extremely thankful for him. Uh, Dennis Burkhart. Dennis Burkhart. Dennis, are you here today? Dennis is a... <laughs> He helps in anywhere we need it, but also he teaches a Tuesday morning Bible study and book study. And we're extremely thankful for the work of Dennis. Thank you, brother. We have some other teachers. I'm not sure if they're here. Cheryl Massaro, Deb Reynolds, and our own Pastor Eric Myers. I'm here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We couldn't do this without our substitute teachers, which is a good amount to be named, so I'll name them, come up as a, as a call your name, Judy Johnson, Ashley Sims, Mark Hamlin, Becky Baquette, Glenn Baquette, Kathy Nibbling, Sarah Matthews, uh, who else? Wendy Miller, Libby Stallman, Susan Manigold, Jessica McGee. If you're here, please come up. <clears throat> We're so thankful for all of our teachers, for all the work that they do. I think I forgot somebody. I think I forgot. Let's see who I forgot. Joe Johnson. Yes, you forgot me. Thank you. We've all heard the old saying, give a man a fish and he'll do what? If you teach him how to fish, he'll do what? But I'd like to add an amendment to that. You give a person a fish, yes, they will eat for a day. You teach them to fish, they might even learn to eat for a lifetime. But if you give them Jesus, they'll eat for eternity. Every Sunday, our teachers are feeding our children and adults the bread of life. And it is this bread of life that allows us to be nourished, to be sustained and strengthened for this journey and the life to come. Let us take a moment to pray. Thanksgiving for all those who have helped serve in this ministry. Dear Heavenly Father, we so thank you for the faithfulness of members, congregation, and those who have stepped up to serve in teaching. And Father, we recognize that your word says, be not many teachers, but we also are thankful that you called us to share your word in season and out. So for every one of these teachers and students, we ask for your grace, mercy, and blessings as we thank you for them in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us worship God.
Clap your hands, all you peoples. God has gone up with a shout. God is ruler over all the earth. God puts this power to work in Christ, raising him from the dead. Jesus Christ is Lord of all. Let us pray. Almighty God, your blessed Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, ascended far above all heavens that he might fill all things. Mercifully give us faith to trust that as he promised, he abides with us on earth to the end of time. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in unity with the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. under the mighty hand of God, casting all of our burdens and our anxiety on the Lord, who promises to be with us and to care for us, trusting in God's grace. Come, let us confess our sin. Almighty God, you have raised Jesus from death to life and crowned him Lord of all. We confess that we have not bowed before him or acknowledged his rule in our lives. We have gone along with the ways of the world and failed to give him glory. Forgive us and raise us from sin, that we may be your faithful people, obeying the commands of our Lord Jesus Christ, who rules the world and is head of the church, his body. Amen. Friends, listen. 
the God of all grace, who calls us to eternal glory in Jesus Christ, will restore us, will support us, and will strengthen us, and will make us new. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. Rejoicing in the new life that we know in Jesus Christ, let us love and forgive one another. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us greet one another with signs and words of Christ's peace. Look, Eliza Rosecombe. She's not sure where she's going, but she's going. Hey, come on. Come here and sit. Oh, no, you want to go over there with Cora. Or maybe not. Lead the way. Today we hear the story of the Ascension. Does anybody know what the Ascension is? No? Well, does anybody know what it means? It means to go up, to ascend. So like when Cooper leaves here, he's going to ascend the staircase. Ascend to rise up. Yes, exactly right. Cooper's going to ascend the staircase to go back up to the balcony. And this is the story of when Jesus went up not the staircase, but ascended. Listen to the story. After Jesus died and rose again, he and his disciples got together near Jerusalem. Jesus had some instructions for them. What's instructions? What? Oh, it's something someone tells someone and then they do it. Like directions, like how to put a, a jigsaw puzzle together, I mean a, a Lego thing together or something, right? Jesus said, as you know, God is doing amazing things in the world, he said, but your help is needed. We need you to go tell stories about me. Tell your friends and family and everyone you meet what you've learned by following me. Be my witnesses in the world. I want us to hear that again, that Jesus said, I need you. We need you to tell stories about me. Then suddenly Jesus was rising up in the air. What was going on? He was being lifted up into a cloud, into heaven. Jesus' friends looked around. Two men in white robes had joined them, and the men said, 
why are you all just standing around here looking up toward heaven? Don't worry. Jesus will come back someday. Right, said Jesus, one of Jesus' disciples. Meanwhile, we have some work to do. Let's get going. Jesus said, tell your friends and family and everyone you meet what you've learned by following me. At the end, it says, ask an adult who loves you to tell you a story about Jesus, and then you tell them a story about Jesus. Let us pray. Oh God, tomorrow, help us to show Jesus to others. For we pray in Christ's name. Wait, Molly, Molly. You're going to sing. Let us pray. God most high, reigning in glory, send down your spirit of wisdom to shine in your heavenly word so that we, we may worship you with joy, continually blessing your name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our first reading is from the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, 
appearing to them 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you've heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit, not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. The word of the Lord. Our second reading 
is from Paul's letter to the church at Ephesus. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks to you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which is called you, and what are the riches of his glorious inheritance upon the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his great power. God put his power to work in Jesus when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but in also the ages to come. And he has put all things under his feet, and he has made him the head over all things of the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to Luke. Then Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple, blessing God. 
The word of the Lord. In my first church as a pastor, which was in rural North Carolina, I learned that this day, well, actually this past Thursday, which is the actual day of ascension, but I learned that the day of ascension was considered to be one of the best fishing days of the whole year. The fish, like Jesus, rise up on that day. Who knew? I'm impressed that those folks even knew what Ascension was all about. Today is the Sunday after the Ascension. Ascension, according to the Acts of the Apostles, written by the same person who wrote Luke's Gospel, Luke the Physician, the book of Acts says that the Ascension of Jesus occurred 40 days after the Resurrection, which was this past Thursday. Ascension is always the sixth Thursday after Easter Sunday. That Jesus rose from the dead and is enthroned at the right hand of the Father has always been an important part of the Christian faith. We sing about it in the great hymns of the church. We announce our belief in the ascension when we say in the creeds, on the third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. But for the last number of weeks, we have been living, you and I, in the period after Easter, that great 50 days of joy. Can you believe that Easter was already 40 some days ago? And now we look toward the 50th day of the season of joy, the Pentecost season, the celebration of the birthday of the church, which will be next Sunday. But we're not there yet. Now, most of us know very little about the ascension of Jesus. Uh, maybe you have seen a painting or a stained glass window. It usually so shows Jesus drifting up toward the clouds in flowing white robes while his disciples stand around gazing with their mouths open, saying, now what do we do? Amazed at best, but more likely, once again, confused. For the early followers of Jesus, the ascension marked the end of their earthly experience of Jesus and the beginning of this in-between time leading up to Jesus' second coming that they were constantly looking towards. And this time of in-betweenness is what we still experience today. Vanderbilt preaching professor John McClure writes, in betweenness for most of us is no fun. Everything seems up for grabs in this postmodern, post everything generation. After the gas powered automobile, then what? After the polar ice caps are gone, then what? After global terrorism, then what? After churches and denominations, then what? Many today, like the disciples, wonder, is this the time when God will restore the kingdom of Israel? What better time for God to come in glory and make the whole world whole again? And there at the beginning of Acts, we hear the account of the rising of Jesus to heaven. The risen Christ does not stay with his followers. He ascends, is raised up, and he goes up while they are looking up into heaven. And while they're standing there, they are told to stop gazing up into heaven and to start being witnesses. To start being witnesses. They are to tell what they have seen and heard, what they have experienced of Christ in Jerusalem, and they are to take that news, that story, into Judea and Samaria and to the very end of the earth. They are to tell what they had seen, what they have known, and what they believe to be true to the ends of the earth. 
Jesus says to start in Jerusalem, then to Judea, then to Samaria, and then to the ends of the earth. Start where they were. That's what they're asked to do, to be witnesses. To be witnesses right where they were. Preacher Rick Mixon says, this story underlines how God works through the simplest of folk, peasants and outcasts, thick skulled and fearful folk, how God works through these people to change the world. These disciples are given responsibility for Jesus' radically revolutionary movement to turn the world right side up. I mean, when you think about it, the disciples do seem like an unlikely group. Tax collectors and fishermen, everyday tradespeople, not able to see past the immediate moment, not able to see beyond their own situations, but Jesus promises to be with them and promises to be with them long enough to be able to give them everything that they need in order for the world to be changed, to be witnesses of what God has done and what God is going to do. An unlikely group, teachers, lawyers, scientists, moms, dads, retirees, professors, researchers, salespeople, business owners, volunteers, counselors, physicians, nurses, administrators, editors, writers, investment and advisors, computer geeks, housewives, stay-at-home moms and dads, police officers, therapists, and on and on. An unlikely group. Did I leave someone out? Students, boys and girls, young men and women, all of us. We are the disciples of today. We are the risen followers of the risen one in the here and now. And we, we have been called to be witnesses today. Andrew Foster Connors, who is a preacher in Baltimore, writes, our vocation is to be witnesses to what God has done in the world through Jesus Christ and what God continues to do in this moment. He says, to be a witness is a tricky term since it bears formulaic notions of proselytizing. He says it can be helpful to point away from how the church normally thinks of a witness and think in terms of forensic or law. A witness tells the truth about what she sees. She gives testimony about what she has observed. Others bear responsibility for how to weigh the value of that testimony and even whether it is to be believed. The witness simply tells the truth, what she saw. Telling the truth about what God has done through Jesus Christ and where one observes the Spirit at work today. And he writes, the church is called. We are called. You are called to tell the truth about where you have seen God in the world through Jesus. How you have known the good news 
and how we continue to see how God is hewing out of suffering, injustice, and fear the good news. And he writes, we are given what we need to fulfill our call. About a month ago now, I shared in a sermon that the story of the two disciples walking on the road toward the town of Emmaus in Luke 24 is probably my all-time favorite story from the Bible. Downstairs after worship during fellowship time, I mean, you never know what happens in fellowship time, right? You should try it sometime. Anyway, during fellowship time, Celia Kirby, in the way that she does, just sort of came up beside me and kept walking. And while she came up, she said in passing, my favorite Bible story is the story of the Ascension. I was caught a little off guard, but I've been thinking about Celia this week and asked her why the Ascension story is her favorite. And she emailed me these words. Eric, I've been thinking about the Ascension for years now. I just think it would have been the most awesome, amazing thing that anyone could ever see. The disciples had already experienced the crucifixion and resurrection and seen Jesus a number of times during the 40 days following. He kept telling them that he was going away. But as they were very ordinary people, Even though they had been with him all this time, I doubt that they really understood what was going to happen. They probably thought he was going sometime, but probably didn't have any idea when it would happen. They were just like the rest of us and didn't understand everything that Jesus was saying. Then, to see Jesus in front of you, and then suddenly he is ascending, I just cannot imagine the awe and maybe fear. I can't imagine what they felt when he was talking to them, talking to them, and just started rising, fading away. She says they were just like the rest of us. I just can't imagine. Be a witness. Tell what you have seen. Let it be known what you have known. How have you experienced the risen Christ? Today with the disciples on the hillside, we stand in awe. Just a couple of weeks after proclaiming that Christ is risen, Now we stand in awe and watch him ascend into the heavens above. And while we are tempted to just stand around in this in-between time and ask, what do we do now? We hear him say to his disciples, we hear him say to us, you are my witness. You are my witness. Go tell them about me. Go show them about me. Go share the good news about me. Brothers and sisters, fellow disciples of the risen one, go and be and do what you have been called to be and do.
using the words of the Nicene Creed, which you will find on page 34 in the front of your hymnals, let us join the church around the world as we confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Out of great gratitude, we are called to give to God, to give to others, to give of our time, to give of our resources. With gladness, come and let us present the tithes and offerings of our life and labor to the Lord.
we gather around this table. So come, come to this table. It is a table of plenty, and there is plenty for us. Christ invites all, the rich and the poor, the outcast to be honored. Come to the gathering of sinners and saints. Come to this blessed table where Christ reigns. Come and taste the good kingdom of God, where all are welcome. This is not our table. It is not a Presbyterian table. This is the table of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And he invites all to come feast with him. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is a right and joyful thing to give you thanks, God of wisdom and God of hope. In every age you have confirmed to the saints the glorious promise of our inheritance in Christ and the immeasurable greatness of your just and gracious power. And so with angels and archangels and all the host of heaven, we join with all who forever sing to the glory of your name. Blessed are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. You revealed your life-giving power through Christ, raising him from the dead, and ascending and seating him at your right hand in glory. And yet he lived among us, our friend and brother, offering himself for our salvation. We remember how on the night before he met with death, Jesus came to the table with those he loved. He took bread and praised you, God of all creation. He broke the bread among his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body given for you. When the supper was ended, he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to you, God of all creation. He passed the cup among his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of the new covenant sealed in my blood for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. O oh God, because we remember the life and work of Christ, his ministry among the poor and forsaken, his death upon the cross of human shame, the victory of the empty tomb and his ascension to glory, we come and offer our lives in praise and thanksgiving to be a living sacrifice in union with Christ our Lord as we proclaim the great mystery of our faith. Send your Holy Spirit upon us now and upon these gifts of bread and cup that we share. Through these gifts, draw us into the community with Christ who dwells with you in glory. Make us one with Christ as members of his body, united in love and service for the world. 
showing the fullness of him who is all in all. O oh God, we pray for your church and its ministry here and in all places. We pray for the nations of this earth and those in authority. We pray for the earth and the right use of its resources. And we pray for this community, the communities where we live, and this community of faith. We pray for those who are hungry. We pray for the sick, the bereaved, the lonely, and all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially those whom we name at this time. Hear these and all our prayers, for we pray through Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit, and all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, now and forever. Gathered together as the people of God, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Come and eat.
the bread of heaven, the cup of salvation. Together, let us pray. God most high, 
We have lifted our hearts to you in this joyful meal with our risen Lord. Continue to sustain us with your power and draw us into your presence so that we may feast with you in glory at the wedding of heaven and earth through Christ who lives forever. Amen. who creates, redeems, and sustains, keep you steadfast in faith, alive with hope, and abounding in love. And the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Sisters and brothers, God has called you to be in the world, showing and telling others the good news of God's love. Therefore, go in peace to love and serve the Lord.